cliff and a rock. A student drops a rock from the edge of a cliff with a height of h. The student discovered that the second half of the entire distance, h over 2, was covered by the rock in one second. Find the total time elapsed as the rock traveled from the top to the bottom of the cliff. What is the height of the cliff? And how much later, if the rock was released, will the student hear the sound coming from the bottom of the cliff and the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. Find the total time elapsed as the, as the rock traveled from the top to the bottom of the cliff. Sketches can be very helpful here because it's kind of hard to understand what's going on. So let's look at our sketch. We're going to take down as the positive direction. We're free to do that, right? And we're going to start up here at the top of the cliff. Here's halfway down and here's the bottom. And we're going to let t1 equal the time it takes to fall the first half, and we don't know what t1 is equal to. And t2 will be the time it takes to fall the second half. And we do know what that's equal to. That's equal to one second. And then one more variable, total time, which will be t1 plus t2, and that's going to equal t1 plus 1. So take a couple seconds and make sure you follow that. And now what we're going to do is use the second kinematics equation because that has time and position and velocity and solve for the time it takes for the rock to fall from 0 to h. And let me just erase some of this now and show you what we're doing. We'll find this time and we'll also find, we'll work with over here, this top, for it to go from 0 to h over 2. Why did we choose that? and not look at this here. I mean, we know the time there. Why didn't we use it? Well, it's pretty simple here. V0. We don't want that in our equation because that makes the equation harder to solve. We'll have the second kinematics as a function of t and t squared. We don't want to do that. But if we start both conditions at the top, right, for this one here, where you fall half the way, and this one here, where you fall the whole way, in both cases, the initial velocity is zero. So that will take out our t, the linear part of t, the v0t from our second kinematics equation. So once we do that, we can solve for t1, and then all we have to do is add it to t2 for the total time. So you can review this again, or you can go to the next slide. Perhaps the equations will be a little more clear than the uh, words I'm trying to explain here. The first equation we're going to work with is when you fall from 0 to h. So here's our second kinematics equation. Our final position is h. Our initial position is 0. And look at this, no v0. So this goes right out. And then we have plus 1 half gt squared. And the plus is because we chose the down direction as positive. So our equation turns out to be 1 half g and the total time it falls is t1 plus 1, and we square that. Now, we fall from 0 to h over 2. That's this position here. Our initial height is h over 2. Our final height, once again, is 0. We hit the bottom. And you can see right here again, we have no linear component of t. And we have, once again, acceleration. But this time, the variable is t1 because you're only falling, and again, that's going to uh, match to some degree. Look at this. We have t1 over here. It's t1 plus 1. Here we just have t1. So we're going to have simultaneous equations in t1. And let me just erase so I can point out what they are. And here's one equation. h is gt1 squared. And over here, we have h is equal to 1 half g, parentheses, t1 plus 1 squared. So what do you think we're going to do next? Yep, set those two guys equal to each other. We now have our system of equations. We have two equations, both in t1, which is nice, right, because they're both equal to h. So we just set them equal to each other, and we have this term right here. We cancel out the g's multiply through by t, we get this expression. And then since both sides are squared, we'll take the square root of both sides. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the left. 
we get t1 plus 1 is the square root of 2 times t1. We take that out to three decimal places, do a little algebra, and we have t1 is 2.4 seconds. We add that to 1, right, and the total time to fall is 3.4 seconds. So it took 2.4 seconds to fall this first distance, and then one second for the next one. And that should not surprise you, right? The more, the greater distance you fall, the acceleration acts for a longer time, so it'll take you quicker to get the same distance. So to cover the first h over 2, it's 2.4 seconds. You're then moving faster, so it only takes you one second to cover the next half. What is the height of the cliff? We now have the total time to fall, which is 3.4 seconds, over here. So we'll go ahead and use the second kinematics equation. And again, we're going to take the down direction as positive. We start at height h. We wind up on the bottom. There is no initial velocity. Our whole problem solution here was just trying to get around using any velocities here because we know the beginning is zero. And then we have our acceleration, which is positive because we're going in the down direction. Put the numbers in and the cliff is 56 meters high. How much time later, after the rock was released, will the student hear the sound coming from the bottom of the cliff? When the rock is first falling, it's making no sound because it hasn't hit the bottom yet. But the student's waiting to hear it, so we need to factor that time into our solution. And the way we're going to do that is add the time we found where the rock is falling to the time it takes for the sound after the rock hits to come up and uh, hit the person's ear. So our equation for the time of sound, well that's just distance over time, right? So let's see. Distance over time is equal to the speed of sound. And what are we trying to put in there? Time. So time is going to be h over v. Here's our time to fall that we found in the previous parts. Here's the distance the rock is falling, which we also found. Here's the speed of sound. And we come up with a total time before the student hears it of 3.6 seconds.